Good evening. Approximately two hours ago, acting on information gathered by Mayor Bloomberg's office, a police task force working in conjunction with federal authorities launched a raid on a facility not far from where we are right now. That raid uncovered the largest amount of contraband in the city's history, some 750,000 ounces of coke. We discovered a vast production and distribution network, and we arrested numerous individuals in the raid. I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, yes. uh, Justin? Uh, were there any weapons captured in the raid? Yes. Uh, we discovered an arsenal of box cutters. And what is the approximate street value of 750,000 ounces of Coke? I mean, obviously it varies, but you can get 20 ounces for about $1.59. <laughs> it feels uh, wrong yeah. to me. Just to Light. clarify, when you say Coke, are you talking about... I'm talking about soda, pop, fizzy sugar water. It's endemic in our communities and even in our schools. In fact, I've got a photo of the production lab right here. That's um, a bottling plant. And here's one of their dealers that we picked up. That's a, oh, that's a delivery guy. It's a scumbag. Any further questions? Uh, yeah, you do realize that Coke can also refer to cocaine, a powdery, really illegal drug? Now, if it comes in a powder form, I'm not aware of it. I mean, this cache of 750,000 ounces was split into 20 ounces as well as one and two liter containers, clearly ready for distribution to the public. Now, we're putting this city on notice. If you're a convenience store owner, a guy who runs a hot dog cart, or a vending machine, we are coming for you. So we can assume then that the war on drugs is over? No, that still rages on. We are still 100% committed to putting lots of black guys in jail and several white guys on light probation. with Brian Sack. Welcome to season two of the BS of A. I'm your host, Brian Sack. New season, new changes. And when I say change, that's not empty campaign rhetoric. We're on Dish Network now, so over 14 million people can watch us. And we have a brand new set. Jack, has the uh, set been shipped yet? All right, maybe next week? Okay. Joining my panel today, writer, performer, and insurance company PR nightmare, Matt Fisher. Hi, how's it going? Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for having me. No, thanks for being here. Hey, no problem. Uh, writer, performer, and foodie, Lauren Adams. Hi, guys. Hi. And writer, comedian, and Lothario, John Bobby. <laughs> All right, welcome, everybody. That sounds like a threat. It does. It's a promise, actually. Oh, okay. a promise. Now, Every week we're going to start the show talking about the, the biggest BS of that week. But I thought for this first panel we'd reflect on the BS of the past summer when we're all about on vacation and things. All right, my favorite incident this summer uh, was Joe Biden telling a black audience this. Romney wants to let the, he said in the first hundred days, he's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Yeah. All right. And in 2007, this guy said Obama was the first uh, mainstream African-American who is articulate and bright and clean and a nice looking guy. Uh, he's also offended Indian Americans on, on two uh, occasions. Now, I don't... Native American? <laughs> no, Indian Americans. Uh, the the first you India. for the clarification. Right. No, Indian. Because like we didn't want gotcha. you to offend. No, no. No, no. We don't want to offend... Native Americans. No, no. Oh, no these gosh, are the ones... Gosh. These are the Fisher's ones... Fisher's part Chippewa? Are you? Eensy weensy. Do you own a casino? Actually, yeah, I, uh, I'm working on it. One blackjack table at a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And I don't think, I'm not saying that he's racist, because I don't think that he's racist. I, I just, and that word gets thrown around way too often. But he says stupid things. <laughs> and I think if he were a Republican, he, he'd be in, in bigger trouble. I mean, what do you think the reaction would be if a Republican was standing before a room of black people? and said, you know, he adopts a fake southern accent and says, hey, you know, my opponent's going to have you all in chains. 
I mean, don't you think it would be the same reaction Biden got? They called him crazy and racist, right? Huh? Like everyone called, other than the joke killed, Wait, you, the mean, joke did kill in that room. We all heard the laughs afterwards. <laughs> it killed in that, that room. That joke but that, killed but also if you, with if, that audience. If you, if you were in front of a bunch of old people and you said uh, foul words, they would laugh initially and then they might think about it later. Sure. That but, has happened. That is true. That's not an if. That is. No, it is true. They, they, were, I can they get mad. I can yeah. guarantee that yeah. people do. <laughs> right. When you say obscene things right. to strangers, they, pull, they laugh at first. Right. And then later they take your side. Are you saying is, is you're doing yeah, yeah, during I'm, a show? This isn't something you do down the walk. Both, down. both uh, uh, during street. stage performances on the street, things like that. Just walk up to old people and curse at them. When you say it that way, it seems, <laughs> that it bad. seems weird. Out but in context. the moment, he makes, yeah, them like laugh. he makes them laugh. Street, I'm, I'm a street entertainer. Okay. So I mean, but do you, I, I think I mean, this was kind of not. I wouldn't say shrugged off. I mean, it got some press, but I just think if it were a Republican, it would be like they, they it would still be talking about it now. And I don't have a watch, but if I did, I'd be looking at it and going, okay, now, still, still talking about it. Well, I mean, I think that that context, the context of a Republican saying that, like, if a Republican were to stand up and speak in front of a room of 200 black people, they'd more likely be saying, like, I'm closing this factory. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the racial undertones so who of, knows, like, chains right. would be totally lost. So you're like, saying we, you will no longer right. be allowed to make chains for this We're company. shutting sure. your city down. Right. So the it's all about city. context. Really. Probably more than just one boo at the end of the yeah. Yeah. Right, right. And the end of that sentence. Yeah. So, so and I then, don't know. That, that's obviously flip. But I mean, think that, you know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, obviously. <laughs> just, obviously just, flip. That's obviously. not one of my actual political no. opinions. That's just a bit of flippery. All right. Now, but you got to figure, I mean, Obama's probably been pacing the, the carpet in the White House and, and wondering, oh, why do I have this guy? What can I do about this guy? So let's imagine uh, you're President Obama. What do you say or do to, to convince Joe Biden to, to just drop out of the ticket? I think you just, I think you crouch down. <laughs> you look at him and you go, hey, buddy. Hey, you're not coming with me. <laughs> okay? I know you wanted to come. I know you're excited about coming, but... You're going to stay here, okay? And he's got his little, like, knapsack right. packed. Oh, man. So you're saying and talk all. to him like a four-year-old? Well, That's it's, like a Harry and the Henderson moment. It is. Like, it's like, like, hey, you. hey, man, or what you is can't come. Artificial intelligence. You just you know, leave him outside <laughs> in the woods, and you just say, bye, Joe. You just stand there. Okay, and then just get back in the car, and you kind of look tearfully back. But don't you think if you left him out in the woods, you'd get home, he'd already be, like, sitting on the couch, like, hey! Yeah. Like he already beat I you I think back he'd be there? talking to a tree, quite honestly. Mm. Or you'd say it and he'd be there, and then you'd turn around to leave and he'd be standing <laughs> there. <laughs> I'd be more curious. I mean, to me, you know, as, as the aforementioned Lothario, oh. to me this seems like one of my <laughs> tactics it where it's like, Joe, are you trying to break up with... Do you want oh. me to break up with you because oh, you, you're just doing things to get me to break up oh. with you because you really just don't have the courage That's a professional. To break up That's with a professional right method. there. Right. Oh, That's man. kind of, you know, because so that way everybody wins. It seems feels, like you're unhappy right. because. If you're not into this, just, just I, say so. So he doesn't feel dumped. Right. Okay. Right. I think exactly. John Bobby just broke up with all of us somehow. Yeah. All right. Can we no, no, no. I mean, if you're still into this, then oh. Oh, God. But <laughs> Wait a second. Do you feel I unhappy? I got myself in trouble. Yeah. No, I don't. How do you feel about me now? I don't know. He's this goofball vice president, but the president himself, I mean, he's, got, he's presiding over a terrible economy. I mean, everything's going poorly, and you'd think that he would be tracking badly in the polls, but he's not, right? He's actually doing quite well. It doesn't look good for Mitt Romney. Okay, it's 3 a.m. at your house. Phone rings, and it's Mitt Romney's campaign manager, and he's sobbing, and he's asking you why they are losing. What do we tell him? First of all, how did you get this number? Yeah, if you see this, my privacy settings on Facebook are draconian, one. so I don't, yeah. can't imagine how you would do that. And also say the first thing you need is sleep. Like, if you have a problem, right. why are you just why are you? like you need to sleep on it and you need to be rested in order to handle it. But, I mean, they're nervous. They're, they're up nights. They've got to be scratching their heads going, what are we doing wrong? Why, why, why are the numbers not different? Why are the polls so bad? I would defer to the John Bobby, what I assume is the John Bobby method in play, maybe a little hard to get. He thinks Hang you're asking him out I'm right now. I'm <laughs> easy. I'm so easy to get that way, too. Just, just yeah. so we're clear. We'll say like, up hey, hey <laughs> voters, we're not interested in you. We're just, you know, we're over here doing our thing. I think the, the number okay. one thing right. they, that they should be saying is, like, maybe stop saying horrible things about women's reproductive and rape and oh. maybe start saying more things about the economy. Like, maybe just stop that conversation altogether. Like they they altogether. don't seem to be focusing on the economy yeah. that much. I think people, I mean, also, these politicians seem to forget that everything they've ever said has been recorded. And really, when you look at, <laughs> I mean, it would be easier for Romney to be more popular, popular with Republicans were he not, in his heart, a Democrat. I mean, you, you right. can't sort of have all these views on health care and uh, don't ask, don't tell and uh, minimum wage. And, you know, he's this long history of having classically democratic ideas when he was a, 
uh, right. the governor, and now all of a sudden... It's hard to turn, turn back on those and say, I actually didn't like what I did. Yeah, <laughs> Come yeah. on, everybody. Vote Video for me. tape is, is kind of a tough one to get around. <laughs> uh, all right, so late, it's election day. All the Democrats have the flu, so there's a chance that Mitt Romney could win. Sure. Weird. All right, so that's like a big a question mark too. Yeah. Like and now you later. know the Romney Boom. campaign yeah. right now is like, oh, okay. oh, idea. It's like weaponized uh, flu. Okay, so imagine they, they've got <laughs> the flu. That's exactly what would happen. Quick one, quick one. Uh, how do how do you convince? I'm a swing voter. You're Mitt Romney. You see me walk into the polls. I have a hat that says I'm a swing voter. How do you convince me to vote for him? O Obama is the girl you should go out with. Makes a lot of sense. Right, right, Growth right. is incremental. I'm the crazy redhead. Right, right. Who knows what can happen? That, I'm going to be a lot more fun. I'm the loose cannon. I chain smoke Marlboro Lights. You never know what's going to happen. Right. You, leave, you go to Sex sleep. appeal is what it is. To exactly. that I say, right. I don't find Ginger sexy, so right. I'm, I'm yeah. out. All right, uh, let's take a break now. Uh, we will be right back. Now, if you were around for season one, you know that we here at the BS of A like to solicit our own under-the-table sponsors. Some say it's stealing from the network, but I say it's just cutting out the middleman. Our Under the Table sponsor gives us money, we give them a commercial, and we use the money to buy our staff dinners, iPads, and pay off our gambling debts. Now this week's sponsor is the CGACompany.com, my favorite reseller of Loom Tech watches, watches made in the USA that also happen to glow in the dark. Now, what makes CGACompany.com my favorite reseller of LoomTech watches? Is it their fine assortment of high-quality products, their incredible customer service, and their love of family? Not at all. It's the check for $300 that they sent to me. Would you like to be my new favorite company? My loyalty is yours for the purchasing. Just email sponsor the BS of A at theblaze.com for details. We'll be right back. Audiences around the world are cheering. Unelectable 2012, the stage show that features the inimitable Glenn Beck and the gang from the BS of A. Now, for the first time, the Unelectable DVD Collection. Disc 1 contains the section of the show where the BS of A gang is on the stage, clearly the prime cut of the show. And Disc 2 contains all of the Glenn Beck footage from the show. Don't miss a minute of the crime, conversations between historical figures and God, and anecdotes about murders committed along our border with Mexico. All self-contained on one disc, which parents of young children may want to hide or destroy. And that's just the start of this amazing eight-disc set. You'll get the entire 75-minute live stage show, plus over 16 hours of bonus features. Disc 3 brings you backstage with hours of supplemental material about the artisans and craftspeople who have brought Unelectable 2012 to the stage. From early renderings of Glenn's t-shirts to archival footage of the original Brian Sack. Available for the first time, watch a real-time comparison between the script and Glenn's bizarre ad-libs. The other side has been trying to destroy the American Constitution. Disc 4 contains clear and present danger in its entirety, starring Harrison Ford, Willem Dafoe, and James Earl Jones. Newly minted as deputy director of the CIA, Jack Ryan is drawn into a secret war against Colombian drug cartels. With conspirators in his own government working against him, Ryan must restore honor to his office and save soldiers abandoned behind enemy lines. Disc 5 gives you a new perspective on the unelectable experience, unedited footage of the audience during the show, thrill as they laugh along with the gang on stage and sympathize with them as they struggle to follow some of the slower, more freeform parts. Disc 6 is a cookie passed along from us to you as a sign of goodwill and thanks. Enjoy it at your leisure. Please do not insert the cookie into your DVD player. Serious damage will result. Disc 7 is real-time footage of unelectable 2012 star Matt Fisher eating a chicken parm sub. Bite after bite captured on this one-of-a-kind disc shot from 12 amazing angles on 70 millimeter film. Finally, Disc 8 features audio commentary tracks from the entire 144-person crew who worked on the show. Just listen to lighting designer Jason Glover and his fascinating and hilarious perspective. During this speech, I used two different ambient gels, then bumped up the intensity and adjusted the barn door since Glenn's backlight was feeling just a little soft. That's entertainment. And there you have it, the Unelectable Collection, yours for only $369.99. 
eight DVDs, and two commemorative booklets. One, a series of unrelated photos of Israel. The other, a how-to book for constructing a pinhole camera, as content from these DVDs should never be viewed directly. Order today. Welcome back. Now, I'm being told that a big political story is breaking down in Charlotte, North Carolina. For more on this, we turn to our new political correspondent, Tim Martin. Tim. Thank you, Brian. I'm here in Charlotte at the Time Warner Cable Center, where President Clinton has finally ended his Democratic convention speech. Wow. So what, what was the final running time of the speech? Uh, one hour, five minutes, 17 days. I've never seen anything like it, Brian. President Clinton managed to filibuster his own party's convention. I'm sure President What's-His-Name wasn't too thrilled about that. Uh, President Obama. <laughs> if you say so. All I can really think about is Bill Clinton. Well, uh, what has the Republican response been to the speech? You know, I haven't heard anything from the GOP yet, Brian, but ironically, as Bill Clinton was wrapping up, George W. Bush was still waiting to start his RNC convention speech. Invite must have gotten lost in the mail. Uh-huh. Uh, so what did President Clinton talk about in his speech? What didn't he talk about, Brian? That's not a rhetorical question, Brian. What didn't he talk about? I can't think of a single thing the president didn't talk about in a folksy, yet statistics-filled way. Can you give us some highlights of the speech? Sure. Uh, on day two, he read aloud all 2,000-plus pages of the Affordable Care Act, which is actually notable as Clinton is the first politician to ever read the entire bill. On day five, he showed slides from his family vacation to Dollywood in 1987. And last Sunday, he spent the entire day speaking about parallel parking. I'll be honest. I cried during it. Uh, because it was so good? Yeah. Oh, and uh, because I realized I had just spent half my life inside this building listening to Bill Clinton speak. I went in as a 15-year-old, Brian, and now look at me. I missed my prom. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Uh, can you at least tell us if President Clinton's speech was factually accurate? Because usually after this sort of speech by any politician, the fact checkers have a field day. Mm, sorry, Brian. Uh, no can do. Why not? Well, uh, the suicide notes that I found throughout the stadium usually just say things like, please make it stop, or, uh, quote, my brain hurts. Okay, well, that, that would explain it. I don't want to be too grim, Brian, but so many people have hung themselves in here. It's like walking through a pinata factory at this oh. point, except when you hit these pinatas with a stick, zip drives, and VIP passes to local strip clubs fall out. Okay, uh, just so you know, Tim, that was too grim. Okay, good note. All right, Tim Martin, everybody. We'll be right back. And now, the Glenn Beck Show highlight of the week. This is all the pie in the world. This is it. The Glenn Beck Show highlight of the week is brought to you by the CGACompany.com. Proud retailer of Loom Tech watches. Premium quality timepieces made in the USA. Welcome to Cooking Corner, sponsored by the CGA Company, proud reseller of Loom Tech watches. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious smoothie you've ever had in just two minutes. How do I know it'll be two minutes? Thanks to my Loom Tech watches. Hi. Right. Hey, Brian, what's up with all those watches? Well, it's cool, Matt. All the kids wear multiple watches. Really? Uh, sort of maybe in like the 1980s, back when you were a kid? Exactly. Plus, I can have each watch labeled so I know what time it is in cities throughout the country. I've got New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and Miami. There's nothing cooler than being informed. Uh, okay. Uh, ignoring the fact that all those cities are in the Eastern Time Zone, it just seems like each of those watches has a nice heft to it, and having them all on your arm might make it hard to use. <laughs> Come on. Don't you trust me? No, no, no. Why would I? Okay. Here we go. First, we're going to add one cup of milk to the blender. Okay. <clears throat> ah, it's just... ah. Yeah. ah! Okay, let's pretend that there's a full cup of milk in the blender. Next, we're going to take two whole bananas and slice them up into quarters. Okay, don't, don't use a knife. Let's you can't expect me not to use a knife on the CGA Company Presents Cooking Corner with Loom Tech Watches. Stop saying their name. You're really only hurting them at this point. Nonsense, okay? Just let me cut it. 
Brian, your arm. Oh, I can see that it cut off my circulation about 10 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Only five sturdy Loom Tech watches could destroy every nerve in my arm. Oh, like you're destroying the CGA company distributor of Loom Tech watches, which uh, glow in the dark, if that's a. They sure do, Matt. And I can see that I still have time to cut these bananas. Oh, God! Oh, Can somebody oh. help! Help! Union is going to give me a lot of crap about that. Ben, can you bring out a finished smoothie so that the audience can see what it would have looked like? Ben, don't come out here. For the love of God, this is a place of death. Oh, don't be silly, Matt. Thank you, Ben. I'll take that. Oh, oh Ben! Now season two is officially upon us. Oh, look at that. Right now, it's the same time in New York as it is in Miami. So very Loom Tech. Loom Tech Watches, a family-owned business that does their business in America. The BS of A presents the best stuff of America with Matt Fisher. Waterbeds. You know, they say you spend four months out of the year sleeping. Why not spend that time swimming? Next time. Saltines. All right. Uh, I'd like to close the show by asking our panel to predict the stories they think will make the front page next week. Matt? Uh, Mitt Romney outraged by Obama's handling of Halloween. (laughs) (laughs) Colon, Halloween canceled. (laughs) Or like... Halloween response, also outrage. <laughs> I just, that made me laugh my earpiece out. That's the first. So, uh, um, uh, I think something like uh, uh, Joe Biden orders fried chicken from Condoleezza Rice. Oh, Whoa. see, okay. Boy. That could actually be true. That could be, and that could actually food. get him, that could be construed as, as racist, I would think. Unless she, t- unless she doesn't unless eat she, fried chicken, and I don't know that. Unless Condoleezza sells it. Right. John, do you have any? Uh, I do. Uh, I think the administration is going to have to play with strengths. And, you know, Obama to America, bin Laden still dead. Right. Just, to, br- just like just, if, in you case know what? forgot. They, just, that the, they missed that at the convention. Right. Yeah. Just can, it's right. a shame that he's gone. They should re-kill him. <laughs> I wish we could. I <laughs> wish we could. <laughs> right. So that's I'm a I'm not afraid <laughs> to say it either. I need to wrap this up. That's this week's BS of A. If you missed us... In Glenn Beck's Unelectable 2012, there will be a repeat performance through Fathom Events at thousands of theaters across the country on Tuesday, September 25th at 7.30 p.m. Check it out. Like us on Facebook. Love us on Twitter. Thanks to my panel, our fans, and especially Dish Network, so I don't have to say that I host a show on the Internet. Now my wife will finally look me in the eyes when we make love. Oh. Good night, America. Yeah. I'm going to hold my breath.